The prophet Isaiah says, your people, Israel, are numerous. But there's only going to be a faithful rem remnant, a faithful few that will come through. This is taught through the Old Testament, emphasized through the Old Testament. Now Paul picks up on this very argument and says, what you see now in Israel's present rebellion does not thwart God's sovereign purposes. It doesn't thwart God's working at all. It doesn't thwart his promises. In fact, it only demonstrates his control. Because not everyone physically related to Israel is Israel. Not everyone who has the claims to that physical nation belongs to God's covenant promises. That's the proof, again, through Abraham. It's also proof through Rebecca and even the prophet Isaiah demonstrates this. What does it depend upon then? It depends upon God's sovereign choosing. And now when I say those statements here, our minds are just blown. Wait a second here. There's some problems I have with that pastor. It's not fair. It's not fair that he chose Isaac and demonstrated his faithfulness through Isaac. But what about Ishmael? It wasn't fair to Ishmael. It's not fair. What about Esau? He, he, he chose Jacob, but what about e Esau? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Because look at verse 14. What shall we say then? There is no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. Paul anticipates that very argument. It's not fair. Guess what? Paul answers that question from verse 14 through the end of the chapter, verse 33. Sovereignty isn't fair. Yes, actually, that's the very implication that comes out, and Paul's going to answer that for us. In 14 to 33, he'll answer the fairness question. What's the other question that's asked when we talk about sovereignty? Well, then who can be saved? If it's all about God's choosing, if it's all about God's electing, then who could possibly be saved? How are we saved? Do we just sit back and wait and let God do it all? I'm glad you asked that question because chapter 10 answers that question. All of chapter 10 then, if God is sovereign choosing, then how do we come to salvation? That's Romans chapter 10. He's going to answer those very implications for us. So what's the point for us is this. The doctrine of God's sovereignty is the answer to the dilemma of his present work right now. How is it that Israel can be in present rebellion? How is it that they can reject their Messiah? How is it that they can be in open hostility in rebellion? And yet God is still faithful? The answer is because he hasn't finished his work. He, it doesn't depend on their running. It doesn't depend on their doing. It depends on his good purposes. He will accomplish his good purposes.